Hi everyone, Brypone here. And I know it's been a little while since I've done a video, but I think this one deserves the video treatment as it never really seems to come up how much of a target SQL Server can be. And when I'm talking about SQL Server, I'm not talking about SQL injection. What I'm talking about is you're on an internal pen test and you found SQL Server open on port 1433, like you see here in our nmap scan. This is an area that I see a lot of pen testers, they'll shy away from it, but this is an area where the blue team does not do a good job by default. And why is this? Microsoft doesn't audit things by default in a lot of cases here. The event IDs are different. It's not the standard. They, this is where the blue team tends to fail because it's not on by default. There is different event IDs. It's not your standard 462, you know, four and 4625 when logins are successful and fail. So what you end up with is this scenario that you as a event tester can take advantage of and show your client their weakness, which is exactly the point of this whole exercise, right? The purple team mantra, let's show our clients where their weaknesses are so that they can improve defenses and keep that cycle going. It's exactly what we want to do. So I'll talk about SQL Server today, and I'm going to talk about some ways that you can improve your auditing for SQL Server and just some basics of how you would attack a SQL Server on port 14, 14, 1433. Excuse me. <laughs> All right. So we have this in-map scan here, right? Most people, most pen testers I know, or at least red teamers I know, they're going to look at this and they're going to say, oh, cool, port 80. They're going to probably explore that. 445, yeah, SMB, let's see what we got there. Do I have permissions to that? 1433, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll stay away from that because I've got juicier targets. Yeah, okay, so none of the other targets pan out. What do you do? Do you give up or do you start looking at SQL? Well, I say you start looking at SQL. So let's do that. Let's take a quick look at SQL. So we're just going to do a little bit deeper scan here with Nmap, you know, Nmap, pretty useful tool. We're going to just do an, an, a script in Nmap that gives us information on this server. So if we quite simply do nmap script ms sql info 192.168.136.11 that's the address of our sql server and the port it now tells us the version of the sql server it just gives us information up look sql server 2022 rc0 microsoft sql server 22 so what i did for this particular lab I set the SQL Server up in the way that I see a lot of them set up, and that is in mixed mode. Mixed mode uses local database users as well as Active Directory and as well as local system. So what does that mean? That means in a lot of cases, you will have a known username of SA and a password that is set by a human. And a lot of these vendors who use SQL will use well-known passwords. Commvault does, there are several others that do, and they're in, you know, set up instructions, it's change the SA password. Well, what if they don't? Then you have a target. So, but Brypone, am I not gonna get caught if I attempt a whole bunch of passwords against SQL Server? In a lot of cases, the answer is no. Why? It's a different event ID. So let's do that. Let's brute force this SQL Server just because. We don't even have to do anything special here. We can use nmap. Now, of course, I have set this up so it didn't sit here for two hours watching me brute force the server. But you can brute force this. And the only thing that an admin is going to see is a different event ID of a failure of a login. And in a lot of cases, they won't even see the login success by default either because SQL Server audits are not on by default. So let's do this. We're gonna brute force a SQL Server. So we go, we're gonna do in map P 1433, we're gonna use the script MS SQL brute. Our users.txt, this simply has just one user in it and that's the SA account. And then I added the password to rock you just to uh, show you, you could use it, a known word list. You can also use the methods to create your own word list. And let's go ahead and we'll give this a shot and it failed to load usernames list. I obviously mistyped that. Give me just one second. 
it's users dot text. And in a minute here, we should get a successful login. Now, once we get the successful login, what does this show the blue team? Are they paying attention? Are they going to be able to, you know, use their normal brute force rules to detect this? The answer is no in a lot of cases. This is where Microsoft in their different event IDs for different things fails. Because if I come over here to our Elastic Sim and I search the normal 4624, I am not going to get one for SQL. I see 4624, but I don't see one here for SQL. All I'm seeing is the DC. Why is that? Because it's a different event ID. So if it's a different event ID and your SIM isn't using some kind of ML or automatically knows that this event ID is a failure of login, you will never detect this. So what is the event ID that we use here? It is 18456. And you can see now this is login failed. Now see, we have a few login failures here. But do you really think your admins are monitoring this at heavy level? Maybe, maybe not. How good is your blue team? How good is your sim? 18456 isn't what I think of when I think of failed logon, right? When I think of failed logon, I think, think of 4625. This is another event ID that you have to track. Now, I do highly suggest you create a sim rule that looks for multiple failures of 18456 to detect this. But are your, are your admins doing this? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so back to our Kali box. Okay, cool, we've got a login. What can we do with this? Well, an SA login is actually a very powerful login to a SQL server. So what we're going to do now is we're going to log in with SQSH to the server and have it do some things for us. And I'm not going to be exhaustive in this video of all of the different things you can do once you get in, but I'm, I'm going to show you a few things. And a few, the first one is definitely not under the radar but it's very powerful. So we'll start with that. We'll do SQSH, and then we'll take the password that we found from our brute force here. And we're gonna copy that, paste that in, and notice we get a one. When you're giving commands to a SQL server <coughs> with SQSH, you're gonna do them in order. So you type it in, you hit enter, you type your second command in, you hit enter, and then you type the word go. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna try XPCMD shell. XPCMD shell is executing commands from an extended stored procedure in SQL. So you're running cmd.exe from the SQL server. Now this one's quite a bit more ob obvious than many of the other attacks you can do against SQL Server. So if you know they're just not monitoring anything on the SQL Server, you can try this. But this one is very, very well known. Uh, a lot of SQL injection attacks will use XP command shell. It's been around for a long time. So we're gonna start with XP command shell, who am I? Now also realize that any shop worth or salt is also watching when who am I is run. If your defenders are good, yes, they're going to see this. So we'll do XP command shell, who am I? And then we'll type the word go, and we'll hint enter, and it worked. Now, why did this work? By default, this is off. Now you can turn this on though. And typically on most SQL servers, this will not work. In server 2022, this does not work. So I'll show you what it usually gives you. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do SP configure command shell to zero. Let me just paste this in. We're going to do reconfigure just like this. And then we're going to choose go. And now this is the default. So now if we run XP command shell, who am I? 
they won't work. And I wanted to show you this because this is pretty powerful. You log in, you get, oh, it doesn't work. Don't give up. All you can do is turn it back on. And if they haven't fully eliminated the DLL from the system, you can even pull it in via the DLL. So we're going to go ahead. We'll just reconfigure our XP command shell back to one. Just to walk back through this so no one is confused, we'll do SP configure XP command shell one. And then we're going to do a reconfigure. There we go. Go. <laughs> okay, I might have to redo the whole thing. Let's try it again. Let's we'll we'll try XP command shell to see if it worked, but you got to be careful when you're doing the uh, when you're doing this. Because if you mistype one thing, you've broken your whole query. So we'll paste this back in. XP command shell one. Reconfigure. Watch your spelling. G O. And there we go. We changed from zero to one. So this means you're enabling XP command shell. Now, if we do it one more time, it will succeed like it did earlier. And go. And there we go. You can see we're NT service and MS SQL server. And this is the normal user that you're going to run under. So for the blue team, how can you detect this? Well, quite simply, if you just search in most sims XP underscore CMD shell and you see anything, pay attention. Somebody is messing around. There are a lot of default rules out there that will detect things touching XP command shell. So that's why I said earlier, if you're going to use this technique, make sure that you know the SQL Server is not well monitored. Right? If it's not well monitored, cool, go to town. But if you're playing around with XP command shell, good chance you're going to get detected even by default sim rules in a lot of cases. Also, <coughs> if we take a look at what XP command shell is doing here, we don't see any of what it's done. Right? We don't see what XP command shell ran. And unless you're one of the shops that has Sysmon or process uh, auditing, which not many do because it's expensive from a SIM perspective, you won't see what XP command shell is doing. So in my lab here, I do have this. So we'll do event code one, and we'll just do and SQL just to target it. And notice, we're going to see here, if we look at event code one, we're going to see that run from SQL server, right? You should never see SQL server launching cmd.exe. Bad, right? Parent process of cmd.exe being SQL server is a very bad thing. And that's what this alert means, or this log, log means. So if you have Sysmon, fantastic. You can see the parent process launch. If you have process monitoring, you might see the, this launch. But if you don't, what do you do? Is there a way I can go further with this? Yeah. It's called a SQL Server Audit Policy. And when you... When you as a blue team are talking to your SQL admins, make sure that they have set up an audit policy. Now on your screen here, you're going to see the setup of an audit policy used basically from, you're just going to run a SQL query and that's going to execute auditing on XP command shell, SP add extended process, external script, OA create, XP directories, subdirectories, and XP file exist. By default, none of these are audited. Crazy, right? So you as a red teamer have an advantage in this situation. These are harder to detect. It's much like certificate authorities. The auditing isn't on by default. So let's uh, let's run this. We're going to go ahead and run our audit. We'll see command completed. And now when we refresh, we will see audits. So if you go into security, You'll see database audit specifications will have to refresh. But now when you expand this, you'll see audit cmd.exe, exec, excuse me, 
and it'll show you, hey, I'm auditing all of those things you just told me to audit, and I'm sending them to the application log. Most SIM vendors collect the application log by default, which is great. So now we're going to see some of these things. Why is this important? Because another attack we're going to try. Good old responder. So if we go over here to our SIM, and in this case, we're going to use XP Dirtry. XP Dirtry says, hey, reach out and get the directory of something. This is on by default on server 2022. You do not have to activate a stored procedure, and it will fly under the radar of most systems. So what we're going to do here, we're going to go ahead and start responder on our host. And we've got responder going. And I don't think I have to tell you guys all of the different ways to relay things at this point, because there are several videos I've done to show you those. But we're simply now going to run XP Dirtry. And I'm just going to give it my IP address of my responder host and just anything, image.gif. So we'll put that in. We'll tell it go. And it says subdirectory dev. But if we come over here to responder, we have a previously captured hash because I did this earlier. But you have the hash. So what can you do? <clears throat> you can relay it back to itself. Get a login. So you just escalated from SA privilege to login to the host. Or Relay it to the certificate authority. Get a certificate as the host that's the SQL server. Lots of things you can do, or you can crack it. Now, NetMTLM hashes are tough to crack, but you can theoretically crack this, right? So that being said, that's an, this is the more under the radar style attack and a privilege escalation. Messing around with XP command shell, you probably won't see anything. All right, so let's go back over to our sim and now that we've done our audit, let's look at XP underscore Dirtree. So we'll go Dirtree. We're just going to search that. And we currently don't have anything. OK. But if we do XP underscore search, our timelines are off. Refresh this. See if we get the audit. <clears throat> Let's go look on the server. We should have XP Dirtry as an audited event. We'll just refresh this. Thirty-three two hundred five, and that's it right there. So if we go back over to our sim here, and we do event code thirty-three two hundred five, you can now see the events for the audit. Now all of these events are going to be thirty-three two hundred five. Success, success or failure. A lot of the time they're going to fall in win log event data param one if you're using Elastic Sim. So, what you can see here is statement XP Dirtry, right? So, if I copy and paste this in, <clears throat> it's just not parsed. So, XP Dirtry did not show up here. But if you do event code 33205 or you get that parsed, you can then find what we just did there to get the hash. So in short, when you see SQL Server, don't give up. The blue team is not good at monitoring SQL Server, and I just showed you why. So take a shot at it. Can't hurt, definitely a good target. Thanks everyone, sorry for the long lag in delay in videos, life caught up, it happens. Uh, holidays and got sick at the same time. So better now, back, I'll be back posting more videos, but uh, keep watching the channel and thank you. Hack the planet to defend better.